Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Joe Calvaruso, the Executive Director of the Gerald R. Ford Presidential Foundation. Thank you for attending today's events as we pay tribute on this, his 100th birthday, to the 38th President of the United States, Gerald R. Ford. The Gerald R. Ford Presidential Foundation is pleased to have commissioned the magnificent USS Gerald R. Ford model that we will unveil shortly. The model is loaned to the museum and eventually will be part of the new permanent exhibit that the foundation is developing in conjunction with the museum. This model will allow the visitors the opportunity to see the extraordinary work of the Newport News shipbuilders. In this new carrier and the class of carriers, the, G the Ford class. This model was funded through the generosity of Foundation Trustee David Fry and the Fry Foundation on behalf of all of us. Thank you, David. In addition to David's support of the foundation, he is a Navy veteran. At this time, would all veterans join David and please stand and get recognized, as well as the current military, get stand and get recognized for their service to the country. Thank you for your service to this country. At this time, I'm pleased to introduce my National Archives counterpart, Dr. Aline Didier, Director of the Gerald R. Ford Library and Museum. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Ford Presidential Museum. Thank you all for coming today to help us dedicate the newest exhibit in the Ford Museum. We are so grateful to Foundation Trustee David Fry for his longstanding and very generous support for the museum and for this model of the USS Gerald R. Ford. This afternoon's program opens a new chapter in the life of this museum. We have had a model of the USS Monterey on exhibit for the past five years. This is the ship on which President Ford served during World War II, and it is the ship on which he famously survived Typhoon Cobra and helped fight the fire on board in December 1944 in the South Pacific near the Philippine Islands. With today's unveiling of the model of the USS Gerald R. Ford, we will be able to take our story forward into the 21st century, showing new generations of students what the U.S. Navy's capabilities are for the future. This model will become a core element of the new permanent exhibit we are planning in partnership with the Ford Presidential Foundation. We expect the ship's interactive features to engage museum visitors of all ages in new ways, learning more about President Ford as they understand why he was selected to receive the very high honor of having a ship of the line named after him. We're honored to have representatives of both the U.S. Navy and the Newport News shipbuilders with us today to help dedicate this model in its new home, the Ford Presidential Museum. Thank you all for being here. Following the program today, we invite you to view the ship model up close and to visit the special centennial exhibit upstairs titled Growing Up Grand, Jerry at 100. And finally, once the chairs are cleared from the lobby, we invite you to enjoy some birthday cake in honor of President Ford's 100th birthday. Thank you all for coming. Sergeant First Class Alvy Powell serves in the United States Army. Sergeant Powell joined the Army after graduating from the University of Maryland with a voice degree. President Ford was one of Sergeant Alvy's biggest fans and was always the first one standing after Sergeant Powell finished. He was personally asked by President and Mrs. Ford and the Ford family to perform at numerous events over the years, including the funerals of both the President and Mrs. Ford. I'm pleased to welcome back to the museum of his dear friend, ladies and gentlemen, first class, L.V. Powell.
Thank you, Sergeant Powell. Captain John F. Meyer, the commanding officer of the USS Gerald R. Ward, CVN 78, is a native of Export, Pennsylvania. Captain Meyer graduated from the U.S. Naval Academy in 1986 with a Bachelor of Science degree in General Engineering. He completed his flight training in Beeville, Texas, and was winged as a Navy aviator in August 1988. During his distinguished career, Captain Meyer has accumulated over 4,000 flight hours, 675 carrier landings. His decorations include Legion of Merit, three awards, and various other personal and unit level awards. He is married to the former, Rachel Edwards, who is also joining us today. Thank you for coming. He also is accompanied, uh, he has two children, Michael and Matthew. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my high honor to introduce to you the commanding officer of the USS Gerald R. Ford, Captain John Meyer. Well, thank you for the warm introduction. Uh, I'll dispense with the introductions as we just did that a few minutes ago, but uh, suffice to say I'm thrilled to be here. I'm frequently asked about how you build a crew for an aircraft carrier because from a shipyard construction point of view, I wouldn't call this straightforward, Matt, but it certainly is more straightforward. As a matter of fact, if you were to walk around the ship today, you would find blueprints in every space, uh, everywhere that the construction's going on, no, nobody's winging it. They've got a plan, uh, and it's a thorough plan, it's been going on for years now and it will continue for years into the future. But it's methodical, uh, and it's well thought out, and it's planned, and you've got it right in front of you. I will tell you that I'm fascinated with the ship building process in and of itself. And this is especially true for all the young men and women, the Boy Scouts and the Cub Scouts that are here today. Uh, if you are interested in math or science, engineering, applied to science, I tell you, uh, that's where it's at. Uh, you can read about it in a textbook, uh, but when you are on board that ship under construction, it is engineering at its finest. It is practical math and science put to work to make our nation's finest and the world's most advanced and capable warship. You know, there is no blueprint for a crew. Uh, when you start building a crew, you start um, kind of like you eat an elephant. Uh, one bite at a time, right? You start in small steps. You start uh, right now, we've got about, um, well, we've got a few folks here, but we've got about 240 or so sailors. That's a little bit less than 10% of the crew today. But as I come here to Grand Rapids and I visit the museum and I spend this weekend and I've gone through this process, 
I know how you build a crew. And really, all you have to do is look at our namesake. What a brilliant story. What a positive role model for our nation. What a positive role model for the youth of today. And what a positive role model for a husband and father today. You know, I look back on President Ford's life and he grew up and was born in Nebraska and, and to an abusive father uh, in, a, in a broken marriage. Moved to Grand Rapids and quickly got on the right track and found himself in a much happier family, in a much happier environment in Grand Rapids. And it's very easy to see how this environment can raise such great people. He excelled in sports. He excelled in school. I talked earlier about the courage that he has shown throughout his life. But an example of some of his other aspects, December 7th happened when Pearl Harbor was attacked and Gerald R. Ford raised his hand and volunteered to serve his country. Much like thousands and thousands of sailors, Marines, soldiers, and airmen that did the same thing after September 11th. That speaks to his character. Following his return from that shortly after World War II, he sought office and won a highly contested uh, incumbent election where he won and served in office, I believe, for 28 years or so in the House. In a time of national crisis, he was selected to be vice president, voted on by the combined Congress by an incredible margin, a margin that, while not unanimous, uh, I don't know that we've seen a margin or, or a vote like that in quite some time. But it speaks to the need that the nation had at the time for a man of integrity. And if you look at the Ford Foundation's motto of integrity at the helm, there's really no finer way, I think, to capture Gerald R. Ford. He was a man of integrity and he was a man of humility. Little did he know, or perhaps he had an inkling, uh, when he took office as vice president in, to replace uh, Spiro Agnew, about 10 months later, he would raise his hand and take the oath for president of this nation. He had the moral courage to make decisions that were right for the nation, to heal the nation, and to move forward. That cost him politically. But I'm not sure that that's what really mattered to Gerald R. Ford. I get the sense that he made the right decision regardless of the consequences. You know, we talk about those aspects of Gerald R. Ford, who is also a loving father. And we have the great fortune on this ship to have his daughter, Susan Ford, be our sponsor. I like to say our sponsor and shipbuilder because she has quite literally built some of this ship. How fortunate is that? He was also a loving husband. So as I look for how you build a crew, well, there's no blueprint for how you build a crew. There is certainly a blueprint for how you build the crew of the USS Gerald R. Ford. All you have to do is look around you. This museum is a tribute to that. This museum and his life stand as a tribute for how you build a crew. What a way to live a life. How honored are we to serve on that ship that bears his name. Thank you all. Well, good afternoon. In the Navy parlance, we always like to start off with what a great Navy day. And it is certainly a great Navy day, and Susan, an honor to be here today. Uh, I'm Admiral Tom Moore. I'm the Navy's Program Executive Officer for Aircraft Carriers, and I'm responsible for the design and construction of our nation's carriers. And uh, it's a, certainly an honor and a privilege for me to be here, and I've had just a wonderful weekend, and I want to personally thank, thank you, Susan and the family and the foundation for that. So I've been asked to talk a little bit about the, the ship you're about to see here on the right, the Gerald Ford. What is it? Uh, but before I get into talking about the ship, uh, I think it's also fitting to talk about uh, how much President Ford was linked to naval aviation throughout his career as we get ready to unveil our nation's newest class aircraft carrier. 
So most of you may not know that last year we celebrated the centennial of naval aviation, 100 years of, of naval aviation. And this year as we celebrate the centennial of President Ford's birth, it's also the, the centennial of the commissioning of a lesser known ship, initially the USS Jupiter. Now you might be saying to yourself, the USS Jupiter, what does that have to do with aircraft carriers? Well, the USS Jupiter, which was commissioned in 1913, in 1920 was converted to the USS Langley, CV-1, our very first aircraft carrier. So in the year that President Ford was born was also the year that we built what eventually became our first aircraft carrier. Pretty neat. Also, I know, as you've, you can read his bio, he served on USS Monterey honorably during World War II, CVL-26. A lesser-known fact about CVL-26 is when the class of ship was originally being built at uh, the Navy Yard in New York at the time. It was originally supposed to be a Dayton-class light cruiser. And CVL-26, USS Monterey, was originally supposed to be USS Dayton with the hull number 78. So as we get ready to commission the CVN-78, it's kind of uh, fitting to know that the, the aircraft carrier that President Ford first served on, CVL-26, USS Monterey, was originally at the hull number 78. So fast forward to his days as the president and uh, the last time that we commissioned the first of a new class of aircraft carrier, USS Nimitz, in 1975, the principal speaker that day was President Gerald R. Ford. And that legendary class of ships, the USS Nimitz class, will be around until 2057. And in fact, the very last ship of that class, CVN-77, the USS George H.W. Bush, also happened to be President Ford's uh, ambassador to China and CIA director, and they also had a close link. So I think it's pretty fitting as we get here today to talk about CV and 78 to see the ties that the president had to naval aviation and to aircraft carriers throughout his life, and which is why it's, I think it's so fitting that as we move forward here that our next class of aircraft carrier will be named the Ford class. So we're getting ready to build the CVN-78, and for those of you who have the privilege or the honor of coming out on the 9th of November, when Susan's going to sit there with a, with a bottle of champagne and whack it across the bow as hard as she can and shatter it all over the place and commission that hit the uh, Gerald R. Ford. It'll be, it's going to be a great day. The Gerald R. Ford, when it is uh, commissioned, will be the mightiest warship this country and this world has ever built. Uh, it will far surpass the capability of the legendary Nimitz class that we have today. It is an aircraft carrier that will have 25% more combat capability than the Nimitz class carriers. It will have brand new catapult systems, brand new arresting gear, brand new radar systems. Essentially, everything on this ship is a technological marvel. The ship is designed with three times the electrical generating capacity of the Ford class, which will allow it to handle the weapons of the future. And as we move into the future with unmanned aircraft and directed energy weapons, and for you uh, Boy Scouts and Star Trek fans think photon torpedoes, it's not a stretch to think that as we move into a new era of weapons that the Gerald R. Ford is poised today with the capacity that's built in that ship to handle it. And lastly, and just as important in these days of tight budgets, the ship is designed over its 50-year life cycle to operate for, at $4 billion less than the cost of a Nimitz class carrier today, and that's, that's pretty substantial. Now, we like to say in the carrier business uh, that the last, the, the, uh, and the Gerald L. Ford, by the way, when commissioner in 2016 will be around for 50 years, until 2056. So we have, a, we have a say in the carrier business that the last commanding officer of the Gerald L. Ford hasn't even been born yet, to just give you a sense of how long we keep these aircraft carriers around. And as we celebrate the centennial of President Ford, it's also fitting to note that this class of ship, the Gerald L. Ford class, with CVN-78 being the very first ship of the class, will be around for another hundred years. So as we celebrate the centennial of this great president, just know that the first ship of this class will be the first ship of a class that will also be around for another 100 years. So I think, in total, it's fitting that we're going to show you this model today of what's going to be a tremendous ship and it'll be a true legacy to a great president. And I'm pretty honored to be here today. So it's my honor uh, at this point to introduce the uh, president of Newport News Shipbuilding, Matt Mulher. Well, thank you, Tom. Member of President Ford's family, distinguished guests, Boy Scouts and Cub Scouts, 
shipbuilders, and crew. It is an honor to be here today representing the 22,000 shipbuilders of Newport News and celebrating such a historic occasion with all of you. We are proud to be building CVN 78, named for a man who embodied integrity, honor, and courage. We are building his ship with the same pride and quality and dedication that we have built ships with for more than a century. We take great pride in that responsibility and feel a tremendous sense of ownership and the role we play to build upon President Ford's legacy. It is our duty, our honor, and indeed our great privilege. Because we know CVN 78 will provide American presence and diplomacy anywhere she is needed, and she will keep President Ford's legacy alive for future generations. Now, as, you, as you've heard from Tom Moore, Admiral Moore, my apologies, sir, uh, the Ford will be the most advanced aircraft carrier in the world once she's completed. It will be fueled by nuclear power. It will serve as a floating city and home to thousands of sailors, and it will be an airport for the most advanced aircraft in the world. All of that is important, but as I have said before, and we'll say again, this ship has a secret weapon. Her name is Susan. <laughs> Each ship is said to carry with it the spirit of its sponsor, and we are extremely fortunate to have Susan Ford Bales as our sponsor. She is an honorary shipbuilder, having helped build sections of the ship. Susan, we are happy you could be part of our team. We ran an ad today in the Grand Rapids Press. The ad honors the life of your father and also introduces the aircraft carrier Ford to the state of Michigan. We have a framed copy of it for you, but it's not just an ordinary frame. It was handcrafted by our shipbuilders using steel from your dad's ship. So Susan, if you, Admiral Moore, and Captain Meyer would please join me at the podium. Yeah, oh, yeah I think so. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Captain, I can hold that work. <laughs> The inscription reads, on the centennial celebration of President Gerald R. Ford's birthday, we are proud to honor the 38th President of the United States. We're continuing his legacy as we build the most advanced nuclear-powered aircraft carrier in the United States Navy fleet, Gerald R. Ford, CVN-78. This aircraft carrier will serve as a reminder of President Ford's strength and leadership as it protects our shores and the freedom of America. Presented to the Gerald R. Ford Historical Legacy Trust from the shipbuilders of Newport News Shipbuilding and the officers and crew of Gerald R. Ford, CVN 78, July 14, 2013. kind of a hard act to follow. Um, I, d I don't think I'll be putting that in my suitcase to try and get it through TSA this afternoon, that's for sure. Um, Captain Meyer, crew members of the USS Gerald R. Ford, Matt, and I'm proud to say my fellow Newport News shipbuilders, Rear Admiral Moore, Alvey, John Meacham, Lieutenant Commander Pupnik, Reverend Holgram, Joe Calvaruso, trustees, staff of Dad's Foundation and Museum, Uncle Dick, 
ladies and gentlemen. First, let me thank my fellow shipbuilders. It is magnificent, and most of all, I want to thank each and every one of you, all of the shipbuilders who are back in Newport News, who are watching this on the live webcast. I am thinking about you for your kindness, your support, and your friendship over the last several years. I have welded with you on the carrier. I have punched holes, I have turned wrenches, and gone up in the shipyard's crane. So to be called a shipbuilder, Matt, makes me prouder than you'll ever know. Thank you. Captain Meyer and the crew members of the USS Gerald R. Ford, your patriotic commitment has been displayed magnificently this weekend in Dad's hometown. Your integrity is now part of the fabric of his rich legacy. He, as an I, would be so honored and proud that his name will be permanently associated with you and the thousands of future sailors who will serve aboard the USS Gerald R. Ford for decades. Ladies and gentlemen, but I also want to tell everyone here about a new scholarship. Wings Over America has established the USS Gerald R. Ford CVN 78 Scholarship Fund. The fund is to provide college scholarships to dependent children and some of the ship's crew and we've placed brochures on the table over here next to the model. It is, ladies and gentlemen, a tribute worthy of our support. And we'd be grateful to add any assistance that you can provide. I'd like to ask Captain Meyer to come up here and join with me at the podium For the last three years, Dad's Foundation has been conducting oral history interviews with over 160 of Dad's administration, family, and friends. The oral history transcripts are now complete. The rich history of Dad's life and his legacy of integrity are vividly captured in these transcripts. Captain Meyer, you and your crew are continuing that legacy and integrity. And I have here the first DVD transcripts of the oral histories at this time, and it is my honor to present to you, to Captain Meyer and the crew of the USS Gerald R. Ford, the oral histories of President Gerald R. Ford. Thank you so much, Captain. By 1941, Dad had graduated from Yale Law School and begun a law practice here in Grand Rapids. His professional life was blossoming. But then on December 7th, it all changed, and Dad and our country. But there was one thing, there was one thing alone Dad wanted to do. And it was not to continue his law practice. And Dad promptly enlisted in the Navy and he went on to serve as lieutenant commander aboard the U.S. carrier USS Monterey in the South Pacific. Now, 70 years later, his name is affixed to the Navy's newest carrier and the new class, the Ford class. In many ways, the model of the carrier that we're about to unveil vividly captures Dad's personal legacy and proud naval service. So I share with you my hope. Many visitors who look upon this model recall the extraordinary life of Grand Rapids' favorite son. And many may marvel at the skill and patriotic commitment to excellence of the shipbuilders of Newport News. And may they recall that Dad asked God's blessing for the brave men and women who will serve aboard the USS Gerald R. Ford. Yes. 
So at this time, would Captain Meyer and the crew and Matt and the shipbuilders join me over here to unveil the model. Joining us again will be Sergeant First Class Alvy Powell. While the storm clouds gather far across the sea, let us swear allegiance to a land that's free. Let us all be grateful for a land so fair as we raise our voices in a song. America, land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with a light from above, from the mountains to the prairies. To the oceans, white with foam, God bless America, my home, sweet home. Once more, God bless America, land that Beside her and guide her through the night with a light from above, from the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, white with foam. America, my home, sweet home, God bless.
bless America, my home, sweet home. Thank you for coming. That concludes our program for today.